seconds, Glenn, as the green flag waves for the restart. Robbie Gordon is the leader, and they quickly fan out on the Watkins Glen front stretch. Wally, they better start falling down. They will not oh, fit no. for the line. No, no, no. no oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Somehow, some way, they all made it. this first lap of the restart. The championship leaders in the garage with Bill. Jimmy, very difficult day. First of all, tell me about the motor. Yeah, the motor was uh, the motor was fine. I made a mistake on a restart. Uh, we were trying to do shifter and uh, transmission, and I, you know, I didn't have any problems with it in practice or anything, and I just made an error myself today. I go from second to third and caught it into first on a restart and uh, ended up hurting first gear in the transmission, and then with that over rev, hurt the engine. And, I lost first gear and was able to still stay up to speed and, you know, we used in second and on and was fine, but uh, when we went back to the restart, you know, I heard something in the engine and uh, ended up taking us out. Two weeks in a row, a lot of points have been spent. Yeah, it has. You know, I've probably been the slowest to conform with this new point system, but uh, right now, you know, it, it's it's helping us out, you know. It's still a lot of racing left either way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the point system, but uh, just too bad. And, you know, today was all my fault. I feel terrible for these lowest guys, Frederick Motorsports, knocking myself out of this. Um, I, you know, I swore I was just out there cruising around, having fun, and made a, a small mistake that was very costly. Does the 24 have that same transmission, Jimmy? Yep, they've got the same thing. And, uh, you know, hopefully Jeff is cl uh, crisp and precise with the shifts and doesn't have any problems. And the transmission's great, you know. It, it's just something different, and I made a mistake, so uh, I'm not trying to blame anybody. Heard it, the transmission guys have worked very hard with it to make a ride, and uh, just messed up. Thanks for stopping. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks. And, Alan, they warned Jeff Gordon about shifting from second to third. They explained to him what happened to the 48 and warned him to help prevent him from doing it. I'm pretty sure that's that new transmission that takes power with, with a shifter that moves over to the center of the transmission. And when they, the new car that Dave Burns showed you in our pre-race today, when they moved the driver, when they got to move the shifter over. So that's the... And the throws on that transmission are very, very close. Oh, we see Harvey going for the lead. And getting it. And getting it. Turn six. Thank you, Robbie. Good wave to the teammates. So Kevin Harvick's out in front, man. Richard Childers came on Robbie Gordon's radio and said the 29 would love it if you'd let them jump out, lead a lap, and then we'll let you overtake the 29 and retake that lead. Thinking about points, trying to solidify that 29 car in the top 10 of the championship standings after Richmond have a shot at that title. How about that? Yeah. Five points, and that could be big. Now, though, it might cost Kevin a couple spots on track. Here comes Casey Mears in the 41. And Dale Jr. works behind. Casey made. It was a nice move. Here comes Junior. Yep. You got to get on the brakes hard and let it roll just a little bit further, but couldn't do it. Harvick drove in there hard. And Nemechek got a one car right there as well. Hey, guys, how's Tony Stewart? What's he saying, Dave? Guys, we're uh, talking with Boris said right now. He did not get in the car that time. I want to repeat what you and I just spoke about. If you got in the car, can you race it at 100%? Uh, probably not at 100% because I'm a little taller than Tony, and uh, I got in this backup car, and I can fit in it. It's just the steering wheel is kind of pressed against my you know, legs, so I could probably drive 80%. Just I'm sure that'll help out. I, you know, I hear his legs are cramped up pretty bad, and I've tried to race with cramped up legs, and it's not a, not a good thing, so... Hopefully you can go the whole way, but I, you know, I'll stand by and hopefully I get to drive, but I don't like doing it under these circumstances, but you know, hopefully I'll go the whole way. He's a great guy. He's pretty tough. If not, I'm ready to go. The last word from Tony was, guys, we need to do this, even if he can only get in for a short period of time. Matt? Terry Labonte had brake problems earlier in the race. He came on the radio telling crew chief Jim Long, it has broken. Something is broken. It will not re-fire. Mm. So the trouble's there for another of the Hendrick Motorsports entries here at the Glen today as Terry Labonte is coasting slowly so far. Here's Tony Stewart looking on Michael Waltrip. Three for sixth place. And by the way, Tony restarted in 13th after the shuffle of track position on the pit stops. Jeff Gordon restarted in 15th, and Jeff is now up to 11th. Back for Jeff Gordon. Here he comes. Bill's got an update on him. 
and the bad luck for Hendrick Motorsports may ex extend to the 24 car on the radio. Jeff Gordon, I may have a front tire going down. Be ready, it's acting funny. So the crew and the driver watching carefully. Man, oh, yeah, really. <laughs> so Here's Jeff Stewart. Gordon, no. taking a look on Michael. I was going to say Jeff Gordon stays out and uh, yet moves up to the 10th spot bypassing Brendan Gaughan to pick up that position in this last lap. Seeing the wireless race talk poll, your opinions on the most significant safety innovation in NASCAR over the past year. BP, they agree with you. I think that I swayed the folks, didn't I? I don't think you swayed them. I think that, that they, they're just right. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, and folks. you're just right. Because well, that one talked about that for a long long time and I, I applaud NASCAR for the work they've done and it's just tremendous seeing these guys hit the wall and that impact reduced by about 50 percent because they're going well, to hit the walls most important but they're all I'm, they're all good moves I'm glad NASCAR made they should be all 25 percent all equally important coming near the halfway point of today's race at Watkins Glen Five different drivers have led today. Tony Stewart's led the most, but Robbie Gordon is out in front right now. A good look down at Watkins Glen. 2.45 mile road course. There are a lot of tough turns in the race to the chase to the championship. 630 of them are here today. Time for a visa through the field. Who's running up front? How they got there? Matt Yoakum, that's first. Robbie Gordon's picked up right where he left off last year. 35 races since he won this event last August, trying to get back to Victory Lane. He's only pushing that car as hard as it needs to go, telling his team he's out for a Sunday drive. Way better than these guys have just cruised. I was hoping you were going to say that. Keep it up. Okay, now that you're cruising, just save some gas here. You're doing fine. We're good on one lap past the second window. And the 29 car was following Robbie Gordon, but now the 20 is trying to chase him down. Dave? And the 29 of Kevin Harvick running in uh, third position now. Actually, let's switch that. Update quick on Tony Stewart. He's hanging with it. You know, they changed major components on that chassis this morning to try to help Tony's car. If not for that, he might be fighting really hard on that car as now he goes for the lead on Robbie Gordon. Man, what a drive through the field. Speaking of through the field, well, for Tony Stewart. The thing I've noticed on Tony's car is he, he has great brakes right now. He's out breaking everybody, and he's going in deeper than anybody, so they're not having any brake problems. Tony Back Stewart was the leader on the restart. I mean, it's Tony Stewart on the restart at lap 33 was 13th. Lap 42, he's the leader. Wow. Let's keep going through the field, Dave. Now, all my cars are going through the field, Alan. I'm not sure where they are anymore. <laughs> Harvick falling back a position, but running very, very well. Remember, they pitted under caution on lap 17, stayed out the last time, and in case you wondered, Richard Childress, the owner, did help get that 31 to move over just momentarily to help Harvick lead a lap. Dave Casey Mears pitted on lap 14, strategy working for him as well. Next stop in about 10 laps, lap 53, two laps short from making it all the way. They made no changes on their one stop, Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. chasing the target. Casey Mears in the 41 car. Jr. says the changes they made to the race car hasn't helped. It is still a little too free trying to tighten it up. He's not happy with the way the 41 car has been cutting him off, Marty. Whoa. Joe Nemechek strong, too, as we've got a new load from Wally. He's currently in the sixth position, having a nice run. They ran the top five at Sonoma until they had a transmission problem. They, too, pitting about lap 53. Ron Fellows in the seventh position in the middle of that gaggle of cars. So the car has gotten tighter to the right and to the left, but they're moving up to the field. Mira Fellows started 43rd today, Bill. Less than 30 seconds ago on the radio, Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. The brakes are shot. There's nothing else I can do, Matt. Ricky Rudd trying to get himself into a class of Dan Gurney, Marvin Page, Parnelli Jones, and David Pearson winning a road course race for the Wood Brothers. They've got nine wins. He hit it on lap 18. They made a track bar adjustment. He says the car just continues to get better and better, Marty. Matt Brennan gone, having a nice run up in the top 10, currently in the 10th position. Came on the radio about 15 laps ago, told the, or about 10 laps ago, told the guys the changes you made that made the car better. He was tight. Now it's very neutral, Dave. 
the 19 car of Jeremy Mayfield. He reported earlier that it was awesome. In fact, in the last pit stop under green, lap 28, they made no changes to help that car. He likes where it is, Matt. The 97 car of Kurt Busch runs in the 12th position. On his first pit stop, they made a chassis adjustment. He says the car just starts out way too tight and then ends up way too loose, Marty. Three-time Watkins Glen winner at Matt gets a lot of encouragement every lap on the radio from his crew chief, Pat Tryson. That is Mark Martin. The car, very good for Mark, handling very well. Not so happy with the engine, though, Bill. Michael Waltrip going backwards in a hurry, Marty, on the radio. No forward bite, just like those other guys. Matty? Matt Kent says the car pushes at the top of the hill and is loose on exit, but it's much better than it was in practice on Saturday afternoon. Two career top tens on the road courses, chasing a third today. Dave? Bobby Labonte reported earlier that Harris's car was just a little bit loose on the right-hand turns, but they didn't make any changes on the last pit stop under green, meaning that the car is handling well, a lot better. Well, ahead there. Casey Mears has gone around at the exit of the inner loop. Everybody's on the brakes. Wow, that was a fast recovery. I'm telling where did Brendan Gaughan come from? What? Out of the smoke? Well, out of the smoke, he must have gained five or six spots. When Dale Jr. jumped on the brakes, that saw, what was that, Kevin Harvick went into the inner loop and then had to stop to keep from getting a penalty. So running positions greatly shuffled as the field comes to halfway. You may see Casey Mears on pit road here. He's looking like, well, he stays on the track. Okay, Buddy might have been slowing and making a pit approach. Kirk Shelmer even with some trouble. Uh, excuse me, that's Tommy Huber driving Kirk's car. Oh, he's a lot of damage in front of that car. Dave? Let's talk about the leader, BP, the 20 car of Tony Stewart. Guess what? They told Boris said, thank you very much. Our driver told us he's going to gut it out. Tony, leading the race, will stay in the car. All right. How could you get out of a car that no strong? Way. So halfway through today at Watkins Glen, the running order in the top 10 shuffled. It's Tony Stewart, though, out in front of second place. Joe Nemechek will be ride with. 